Hi, welcome to the next section, Writing Custom Observables. Here we'll first learn to create custom observables, and then we'll be reading tweets for stocks reactively. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with creating custom observables. In this video, we're going to show you that the creation of custom observables isn't complicated. We'll start off by exploring how we can plug in Java's future and callable interfaces and later we'll see how to use the emitter interface. The simplest way to integrate any Java code into RxJava is to use the callable interface. It's an interface that represents an operation that returns some result and can throw an exception. It's very similar to Runnable, however a Runnable interface doesn't return any value. To make callable a part of reactive flow, from .callable method can be used on observable. This is the from callable code. If the operation will be long running, you must subscribe to an observable on a specific scheduler. So we've added this code in the main activity class and it's commented. If it is not commented, it will run on the current thread by default and will block all other operations. Futures are usually used in places where a need to fetch a result of an asynchronous operation is present. The future waits until the computation finishes and then it becomes available for retrieval using the .get method. If the result is not available, the future will block until it becomes ready. RxJava provides a method on observable to consume futures. This is the method provided by RxJava. Here, .fromFuture is more useful for integration with code that already provides future as an interface for its long-running operations. If one is trying to adapt to the existing code for use with RxJava, it's easier to just use the callable interface. Let's now integrate with Emitter API. The Emitter interface is a much more powerful construct because it allows you to control the way items will be emitted into the observable in a very granular fashion. Basically, the observable will be controlled by these three methods. First is onNext. This method is to supply a new value to the observable. The next one is on error, and it notifies in about an error or exception that has occurred internally. And the last one is on complete. This notifies an observable that there won't be any new values, and it can safely terminate. The emitter interface is supplied to an observable during its creation with the .create method, where the full type interface looks like this. However, since we're using lambdas, it will usually look like this. It's important not to forget to call the on whenever we're done supplying values. Otherwise, the observable won't terminate and it will need to be disposed of manually. The onComplete call can be easily missed if the exceptions aren't handled properly during the emission of the values. Now take a look at these lines of code. Here, return value can throw an exception. If an exception is thrown, onComplete won't ever be called. This can be fixed by adding a finally line as shown here. This way, onComplete will never be missed. The emitter interface is available for all reactive types, such as flowable, observable, single, maybe, and completable. It's used in the same fashion like this block of code. The emitter interface is a powerful tool and can be cumbersome to use in some cases. So callables and dot from callable might be a preferred option in some cases if the flow is simple. However, it's almost always mandatory to use .create whenever multiple values will be returned, and in cases where we need to receive values from some external listener. Sometimes it's necessary to do a cleanup on the internal resources that we use to feed emitter when an observable completes. Consider this example where we will click events from a view. This observable never completes, but even if it terminates there is still a problem present. The reference to the emitter and thus observable will always be present because this call created a click listener that never went away. So the click listener always has a reference to the emitter and emitter has a reference to the observable. The memory will never be freed up and the set on click listener will keep calling. To fix this we need to add a cancelable action with this. This is the code for the cancelable action. This way, the listener on text view will be cleaned up. This method can be used to clean up other kinds of resources, such as these. Closing files, closing remote socket connections, terminating threads, others. So now the block with cleanup code as shown here. In this particular case, since we're working with views, 
it's advisable to use main thread disposable from the RX Android library. This way, the interaction with the text view will happen on the main Android UI thread. Also, in this case, we've used the dot set disposable method. It serves the same purpose as dot set cancelable, but is used in cases where the disposable interface is already available from somewhere else. This brings us to the end of this video. Here we learn to create custom variables. 